Turning now to the battle for House and Senate seats here in Michigan. Republicans hold the majority in both, but Democrats, well, they're hoping to dent the supermajority in the Senate. So, Nolan, let me ask you this before we talk about the House. Let's talk about the Senate. How will that help them in denting, uh, in stopping that supermajority in the Senate? Explain that for people. Well, I mean, Republicans still think, and, and I think uh, most people who are observing this think that Republican, are, are we talking state Senate? We're talking about state Senate. Well, I don't think they're going to make that, um, that pick up that many state seats in the state Senate to make a difference. Where the fight is, is in the House. And if this governor's race is as close as it looks, that could wash out uh, a good number of uh, Republican House members. And we could have a, either a Democratic House or a very, very slim majority uh, um, uh, for the Republicans in the House, which will make it much harder for the governor to get his agenda through. If he loses one or two Republicans on any issue, you know, you'll have a stalemate. Um, the Senate, the margin is so wide. I, I just don't think... Um, the, the Democrats should pick up, you know, and it all, it all has to work together, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if Mark Schauer gets these votes uh, that they think he's going to get in order to win the election this, from this surge of absentees, that should play out down the ballot. So... Uh, you get closer to the idea of a Democratic House. I'm not sure you quite get there. Uh, and you pick up some seats in the Senate, even though, uh, you know, it would be impossible to, to, to create a Democratic Senate majority at this point. But there's fewer Democratic ticket splitters, I would assume, this time because of the Senate race. A lot of Republicans will vote for the, the governor. A lot of people will vote for, the, for, for Snyder who won't vote for Terry Lynn Land. So you're not going to have people going in there and just yanking just the elephant's over. tail, yeah. you know, like you will on the Democratic side. So you have people looking a little bit down the ticket. What would that do if we did get a Democratic majority in, in the House? And what would that do to shape Lansing mm -hmm. in the next four it years? Would, uh, the, the biggest thing it would do is it would give, if, if Mark Schauer is, is the next governor, uh, it would give him an ally. I mean, it would give him a tool to, to start working with. Uh, I, I am very fearful, in fact, of the idea that, that you'd have a Democratic governor and an entirely Republican legislature. I think that results in a stalemate uh, that would get us nowhere. And I, I think Republicans are as responsible for that uh, as, as, as the Democrats would be. I mean, uh, getting them to work together, I think, would be an enormous, enormous feat. Um, uh, you know, if Rick Snyder is the governor and you get a Democratic House, that also gives him an ally. Uh, you know, the, the governor, I think, has been frustrated with the far right wing of his party and felt pushed to do things and consider things that he didn't want to do. If he had a Democratic House, it would give him, again, a lever to pull and, and, uh, and use to try to, to tone down some of this, this nonsense yeah. on, the, on the far right. I would agree that he'd do better in a um, divided legislature, uh, but I think you can just look to Washington and see what this, that what this might look like, or just roll back the clock five, six years to Michigan and see what this is going to look like. We didn't get anything done here for an awfully long time uh, <laughs> under the last administration. And, you know, the problem is, uh, the problem is on the right. Uh, the, that, that is a party that is, is, is lurching further rightward uh, and where the, the, the word compromise has been turned into blasphemy, uh, uh, you know, if we get a well, Democratic governor, we're going to need them to stop uh, that kind I, of, of politicking I, I, and start governing. You look at the Democrats in this last legislature. They voted no on almost everything. The problem's not just on the right. The problem is each on party bunkers wins. down. Every, everybody bunkers down. And you had folks voting no on things they... they Probably support. Do you but think all of there the would end up being key, some kind of payback, though? All if of the you governor's big wins: the Medicaid expansion, uh, the grand bargain in Detroit, mm -hmm. uh, uh, all, all the big picture things he did. He did with Democrats. Uh, the Democrats came along, and he got enough Republican votes. I think that's a model for the kind of governance we need. Uh, but but you do need more Democrats, I think, in order to make it work in the next in the next. Now, I, I think it'll be interesting when if, once we see the makeup after after November fourth. Would we then see a difference in what the lame duck session would end up being should you get a shift in power in the You know, House. I think you will. I think you're going to see them try to finish their agenda then in lame duck. Not sure how effective it'll be. Uh, I don't think the governor, just knowing his character, is going to sign off on state-changing legislation as he walks out the door. That doesn't strike me as who he is. I think one fallout we haven't talked about is what it means for the city of Detroit. The governor has started this 
and has brought the legislature around with him. I think if there's a substantial change in Lansing, Detroit may be left out sort of at a time he, it needs Lansing the most. All right, we'll be watching those races.